couple weeks back, I released a movie review, and in that review, I stated that I never go into movies blind. I always do a little bit of research, and I regretted going in blind that time. Uh, apparently, I haven't learned my lesson because I did it again. So I watched a movie called Skinamarink, and at the time, I'd only seen one person talk about it. I forget their name, but they were very, uh, they were very sure of their feelings for this movie. And he was hyping it up, saying it was creepy this, creepy that. He'd never been scared by a movie like this in a while. And uh, I figured, what the hell? Since I've watched it, it has apparently gone viral. It's even getting a theatrical release next year. And I believe it's getting put on streaming platforms as well. Let me just tell you guys about this movie a little bit. I have never seen a film like this in my life. I have never been challenged by a film like this in my life. And I don't know that I've ever been more scared by a movie in my life. Uh, Hereditary is a very, 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 very close second. But there was something about the simplicity of this movie, or lack thereof, depending on who you are, that just fucked me up. After watching it, I only recommended it to two people. This is very much an acquired taste. It's not traditional in any sense of filmmaking, whether it be storytelling or structure or composition of shots. Nothing about it is ordinary. You're just dropped into this world and basically you're abandoned there. It feels like you're abandoned. It feels like you are in someone else's dream or memory where you're kind of just enough on the outskirts to be a witness for what's happening but it doesn't feel like you're directly involved the the visual and the audio choices are very stylized here in terms of audio you get almost no dialogue and the dialogue that you do get is very distorted and echoey and very harrowing there is no score, there's no music, you just get a very constant, semi-heavy static. There's even a, uh, a grain over the film to kind of give it like a, a home video feel, almost. And even in moments where the frame is just completely black, because this is a very, very, very dark film in terms of lighting. The static almost tends to like play with the shadows or whatever you're looking at and almost distort the image in ways that it's not actually doing so. Um, I don't know if I'm the only one that really picked up on that or thought that that was occurring, but it enhanced the creepiness a lot. There are two central characters in this movie. Uh, they are siblings. There is a daughter who is six and there is a son who is four. And their names are Kaylee and Kevin. You follow their experiences throughout this movie, but you don't necessarily follow them. You hardly see them. You don't see their faces. You get very low shots of their feet. You get the back of their head when they're looking at something else. It's very, very, very reserved in what it tends to show you and when it wants to show you that. Like I mentioned earlier, the composition is really unique in this movie. Uh, there's almost no movement to the camera whatsoever. You just jump from established shot to established shot. There's no movement within the frame. It's just very obscure angles. There's a lot of low angles that are aimed up at corners of the ceiling or door frames or windows or something like that. And I don't know if this is done to enhance the mood and the story and give these kids a sense of like hopelessness like everything is out of reach and it wants you to feel that way too or or if it's just to build on the sense of being alone i it could go either way i wasn't really sure again i will notate the same reason it was not a good watch to go in blind on the other one is because there are some heavy there's some heavy scenes in this movie and a lot of them all of them really are focused around children uh child abuse self abuse it again very selective on what it wants to show you but even when something is happening and you can't see it it kicks in some audio cues or some noises to sort of build upon the scene that you're not seeing this film is a very 
very slow descent into something way more sinister than I was expecting when I started this movie. I have not stopped thinking about this movie since I've seen it. It has been over a week now and I just hope that this grows to be a cult classic like I'm hoping it is. Make more movies how you want to make them. If you want to make more like this, I am signing up every single time. I cannot applaud Original Visions more. I hope they get the credit that is due to them. And if you would like to uh, have issues sleeping for a couple nights and want to keep the lights on, check this movie out. The director even released a little like one or two minute video, it's on YouTube if you want to look for it, where he straight up says, I can't guarantee you're gonna like this movie. And I can reiterate that. I cannot guarantee, actually I can promise that 90% of you who watch this and then go watch that movie, you're probably not gonna like it. And those of you who would feel that way, I'm not really talking to. Those of you that are open to interpretation and you are open-minded when it comes to experimental filmmaking, watch this, appreciate it, talk with me about it, that's all I can hope for. As always, I appreciate you guys checking out my review, uh, checking out my videos in general. I know a lot of the stuff on my channel is horror-based, but heart wants what the heart wants. So thank you for watching again, and I will catch you on the next video. Peace.